What should we favor? Free market incentives or government overreach? I'm Marco Perry. Welcome to the Perry Platform. Recent news of Canada banning traditional gas-powered vehicle sales by 2035 had me thinking about the balance of government intervention and free market forces. How should we mediate between these two polar opposites? So, on one hand, you do need some government intervention. The anarchists and extreme libertarians are wrong about human nature. You can't have no government. It'd be pure chaos. People would not organize themselves into efficient models. There would be mass corruption there would be disregard for the environment. Frankly, it'd be a hellscape, and I'm sure of that. Can you imagine a for-profit police force? Or a for-profit fire department that would simply let your house burn down if you couldn't afford to pay them? Or what manufacturing companies would do to nearby lakes and waterways if there weren't strict regulations? The government is there to do the things that the market cannot do efficiently. And the reverse is true. The market is there to do the things that the government cannot do efficiently. In contrast to the anarchist dream, you have a situation in the polar opposite with a far overreaching government body that controls everything. And here, the communists who would typically subscribe to that type of mentality are also wrong about human nature, but in a different way. The anarchists think that people having absolute freedom is the best case scenario. I think that's wrong. And the communists have an ideology where people having no freedom and leaving everything up to the government is the best case scenario, which is also wrong. Because the people in the government are still people. And they're going to abuse that power. You're better off with a government that does intervene where it's necessary, but it remains small where it shouldn't be. There is no shortage of examples of a totalitarian government that drives its country into the ground. And that seems to be the case almost always. Because even if you really like the current leader of a totalitarian regime, they're not going to live forever. That power is going to fall into somebody's hands who is going to wield it against you. I'd much rather not give the government any weapons at all, aside from the ones that they absolutely need. So even if someone radical, someone insane, finds themselves in the seat of power, what they can do is limited. The one guarantee from politics, regardless of the system that you deploy, is bad leadership. You're going to have bad leaders at one point or another. So with that fact in mind, you should create your systems in a way that accounts for it. I'm personally in favor of the government mandating things that are clearly necessary for immediate citizen well-being. I'm not sure that there is a clear rule to follow. We might just need to take things on a case-by-case basis. But I think everyone would agree that restricting the sale of drugs and alcohol from minors is a good thing, for example. People would not argue against that. It's a clear line. Other things are more gray what type of events you can attend, things of this nature. In the case of mandating electric vehicle sales, where a clear social good is not actually evident and it's debatable if it's worth sacrificing our choices, I would prefer the market incentives approach. For example, if you make electric vehicles cheaper, people will naturally choose it. This preserves your choices, it curbs government overreach, and still achieves the goal of reducing combustion engine vehicle sales. As we've seen time and time again, the market is great at becoming more efficient, especially when given enough time. Electric vehicles are still relatively new, and therefore they're a bit more costly right now. If the government really wanted to incentivize sales of EVs, they should do things like focus on providing incentives, focus on giving tax rebates, or giving you brakes if you install chargers in your residence. These things will lower the cost equation and make it more likely for people to adopt the technology. And eventually, if things go well, those incentives can be retired because naturally, those vehicles will be competitive and cheap. And if somebody really does want an internal combustion engine vehicle, they can still get it, but they will not be in the majority if the economic incentives are so strong that it actually costs you money to make that choice. Another adjacent situation is plant-based or lab-created meat. Animal suffering is a real problem that our generation has to grapple with. Factory farms are not defensible morally at all. Yet, we would have riots if the government forced people to eat plant-based diets. It would be too clear an infringement on our rights as citizens and as people. In a case like this, where there is a desired behavior, and you can achieve your outcome with market forces, I would always suggest that the government and people support the market forces option first, 
before anything else is deployed. From the government perspective, you have powerful tools like subsidies and rebates. And from the manufacturer standpoint, if you made meat alternatives as good as the real thing, if you made them comparable in price or even cheaper, you would change behaviors in your population. Of course, you wouldn't convert everyone, but you would make tremendous progress in an acceptable, mandraconian fashion. If it's cheaper, it tastes as good, that's going to be enough reason for most people to make the change. Generally speaking, people will follow economic trails. We have limited resources and optimizing them is always top of mind. I'm suspicious of government bodies who ignore this fact and instead rush to deploy force, coercion, or mandates instead. They are oftentimes not necessary. And even in the benign case, you could argue, of EV sales, it sets a precedent. Who is the government to tell you which type of vehicle you can buy? And how can that go wrong in the future? If you set the precedent of the government being able to dictate what you purchase, maybe they're going to set something up where they dictate what news you can purchase, or what type of TV you can view, or what type of content you can pay to consume. It's far too eerie of a playing ground for us to find ourselves in, and Trudeau's liberal government has been known to overreach. This is yet another example of that. When it comes to internet censorship or trying to force tech companies to pay for news to be hosted on their platforms, these are all idiotic ideas. There are other ways to achieve our goals that make a lot more sense. If you are rejecting market mechanisms, you better be smarter than the market. You better have a good strategy and a reason for doing so. And I have no faith that our current government fits that description. They proved themselves to be quite the opposite, actually. By 2035, it's very possible that EV technology evolves to make it naturally the successor to older gas-powered vehicles for the reasons that we mentioned. It could become much cheaper in terms of fueling it up in the vehicle itself. That would be entirely due to the market and innovation and companies like Tesla, and not due to government intervention. If by 2033, we see that the majority of car sales are EVs, that will not be due to the government, but I'm sure they'd like to take credit for that. Even this timeline is interesting. The future is extremely hard to predict. And yet we're here making predictions almost 12 years down the line as to how the market's going to change. By then, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe EV tech actually becomes outdated and there's something better to be using. Or maybe we realize that we actually don't have enough lithium to provide all these vehicles with a competent battery. Or maybe we find that the electricity grid cannot keep up with this demand and that charging stations are overrun and you're waiting hours for your spot to get a turn. Everything here is possible, and once again, I have to question how the government feels so confident about such a mandate, and why they would make it so far in advance. It seems to me the smarter thing to do would be to set milestones, goals, not full-on bans. It'd be very different if the government said, hey, by 2030, we want to see something like 40% of vehicle sales being EV, and we're willing to do things like incentivize you economically to achieve that, via things like rebates. But... To say by 2035 we're going to outlaw the sale of non-EV vehicles, that's a whole different ballpark. Even if there was no ill intent here, I do fear for the way that we're heading. Now with that, it does bring me to the end of our conversation for today. If you enjoyed the material, be sure to leave a review and share. It'll help us grow. And you can find me online at periplatform.org and social media at periplatform. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.